Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. You become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. Good morning. This is Tracy Hales with Right on Four Corners on KSJE 90.9 FM in Farmington, New Mexico, and 103.3 in Durango, Colorado. Today I'm talking with Loretta Hall. Loretta's latest book is a memoir of Wally Funk, told to Loretta by Wally Funk, titled Higher, Faster, Longer, my Life in Aviation and My Quest for Space Flight, accompanied by the children's book of the same title, Higher, Faster, Longer, Wally Funk, Aviator Extraordinaire. Good morning, Loretta. Good morning, Tracy. It's great to hear from you. And good to talk to you, too. We've come a long way since Fargo and our great award winnings there. That was a fun conference, a little bit of an unusual place to go, but it turned out to be great fun. It really did, yes. Fargo, North Dakota. But I'm fascinated by Wally Funk and your story about her story. Well, I'm fascinated with her, too. She's one of the most amazing women I've ever met. It sounds like it in the book. She's, she's quite the, the accomplished person, and determined is a good adjective for her, I guess. So yeah, when, the two the two words that that I use most often about her are positivity and perseverance. Ah, I can see that. She yeah. So she told you basically the memoir, right? Right. And then, you know, I did a little research to kind of fill in some background information. So, before we go further, for those in the audience who don't know, Tell them who Wally Funk is. Well, she was um, a member of the first group of women who directly challenged NASA to accept women as astronaut, astronaut candidates. This was back in 1961, and NASA was not able to do, willing to do that at the time. But these 13 women passed the same very rigorous physical examinations that the Mercury astronauts had just passed. And so they proved their, at least their physical capability. And um, Wally was the youngest of the group, and she is the only one of the group who continued to pursue her goal of space flight for the next 60 years. And in the meantime, she had a, just a fabulous career in aviation and broke some uh, glass ceilings along the way. She certainly did. So had you met her sometime before you two got together to write this? Yes, I, I met her about five, five and a half years ago at a conference where I was speaking about Women Space Pioneers of New Mexico. Oh. This was a, a conference that was actually held in uh, Florida, but it was a women's aviation conference. Mm -hmm. And in she walked to hear my talk. And, of course, she's one of the people I was going to be talking about. Oh. <laughs> so, wow. So when I came to that part of the talk, I said, okay, this next person I'm going to speak about is sitting right there. And, Wally, if I say something that isn't quite tr accurate, let me know. And she came up to me after the talk and gave me a big hug, and mm. we became instant friends. I can see she seems like she has a vivacious personality. She is. She's very much a people person mm -hmm. and is always cheerful and upbeat and helpful. So whose idea was it, yours or hers, to write this memoir? Well, I, I had known who she was for some time, because I write nonfiction books about 
human space flight and, mm-hmm. and its history. And I, I just felt all along, ever since I read about her, that, that she should write a book about her experiences. And so after we became friends, I mentioned that to her a couple of different times and said, Wally, you know, you, you really need to get your story out there. It's so inspiring. You, need, you just need to share this with people. And she kept sort of saying, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. And then finally she said, well, would you help me write it? So I just jumped at that chance because I thought it was a really important story mm-hmm. um, to get out there for people. It's very inspiring. I think so, too. I had not been familiar with her, so it was great to learn about her. Now, as far as writing this, you credit her as told to you, but I bet it wasn't sit down, write verbatim what she said, was it? No. I I spent several days interviewing her over a couple of different visits. Mm -hmm. She lives in the Fort Worth area now, so I went over a few times to to see her, and we just sat and talked, and I had her tell me about different things, her, her recollections of different things that happened. And I knew some of the things um, that were going to be important in the book, most, mostly about her efforts to get it, um, into space. But I didn't realize until we started working on it all, all that she had done in other ways, mm-hmm. in aviation and in uh, public speaking and promoting aviation safety and uh, all sorts of things, and, and some of her uh, rather unusual and adventurous hobbies. Yes. Yes, she does have those, doesn't she? (laughs) She's not one to be uh, tied down, that's for sure. (laughs) No. Did you write the children's book along with it? Because I noticed in the children's book there are handwritten letters by Wally to kids. Uh, No, that was a a later project. Mm -hmm. Um, In in my once I had the the first book written and was trying to find a publisher, it's very very hard to find publishers these days. Yes. And in the meantime, um, a woman named Janet Ivy um, had been in contact with Wally. Janet has a an internet uh, program called Janet's Planet. Okay. And it's a STEM uh, program for kids, with primarily with a, a space. Um, aspect to it, and she had had Wally on as a guest on her program, and in setting that up, um, I also got invited to be on her program to speak about writing about space, and then I was telling Janet uh, that I was looking for a publisher, and she said, oh, why don't you try this person, they, they, this company, they just helped me publish the first in a series of children's books about unknown geniuses in um, science. Oh, and so they published the the first book, and then Janet and the publishers uh, decided that they would like Wally's story to be the second book in that series mm. of children's books. And so that's when Janet and I got together and wrote the children's book. And those, those little um, letters that you mentioned mm-hmm. um, are, are part of what Janet did. Oh, okay. I think that you a person needs to read both of them because they go together well. They do, and the children's book is um, it, it's not a picture book for for the youngest readers. Right. It's it's geared to about um, ages eight to twelve, mm-hmm. and it's um, so it it really tells a lot of her story. It doesn't go into um, some of the things about her hobbies and some of the adventures that she had, but it focuses on the aviation and the space aspects. Um, but it's it's a, a, a very engaging way. Janet has a really wonderful way of, of communicating mm-hmm. with children, and um, so I'm, I'm just very happy. Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Now, one thing that in the adult version of the book, the details in the testing that Wally had to go through are just amazing. I mean, they're, I don't think I could stand up to those tests. I don't think a lot of people could. Yeah. <laughs> they were, Dr. Love, they, for 
people who don't know this, the, the tests for NASA's first astronaut, the physical exams were done in Albuquerque at the Loveless Clinic, and Dr. Randy Loveless the third was in charge of, of doing those. And so it was his idea to, to test some women also. But Dr. Loveless himself described the, the testing se- series as one of the toughest medical exams in history. Mm. Um, it, it, took, it took, for the ma- male candidates, it took seven and a half days straight, at least 11 hours a day. And for the women, they come, came in smaller groups, so they compressed that into five very full days of yes. testing. And, and they were very exhaustive, and, and at least some of the tests were quite unpleasant. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it. I cringed while I read that. And I think that it was impressive that the women were not given any leeway with the tests, And that they were considered really more, they complained less, I think it said. (laughs) Yes, that's what uh, one of the doctors at the clinic said. And he he said they were told not to go easy on them, but to to give them exactly the same uh, tests that the men had. Most of them, I mean, a higher percentage of the women, if I remember correctly, passed these physical tests than the percentage of men that passed their tests. Isn't that something? But they <laughs> still wouldn't let her become an astronaut. Right. At that point, they were just not not ready to deviate from their their set plans, I guess, I guess, when they had only considered men. And I know that after the fact, after the book was written, and you have an, ad- an addendum on your website about what happened just recently. Yes, uh, just just over a year ago. She had tried so many different ways for so long to get into space. And then just at the point she was finally starting to accept in her mind the notion that, gee, it might not happen, she got a a phone call from people at Bezos, who's the head of that company, invited her to go with him on the first passenger-carrying suborbital space flight um, of his company. And that took place on January 20th last year. Isn't it that wonderful? Such a, it, it was just such a wonderful, wonderful recognition of, of her accomplishments mm-hmm. and the, uh, her support of, of women in space. And, you know, in, in, in some ways it almost feels like, I don't know, something that just kind of happened to her rather than something she accomplished. But... I, I look at it as being a recognition of of what she did accomplish and how hard she pursued that goal. Right. Fabulous opportunity for her. I was. I'm so, just a, a fabulous opportunity for her. I was. I'm. I was so glad to read that, and to find that she finally did fulfill that dream. Now, how long did it take you guys to put these books together? Well, the first book, of course, took longer, yeah. um, but it was probably a year and a half's worth of, of work to to gather all the information and fact-check everything mm-hmm. and figure out just how to tell the story. I, I really wanted it to be written in Wally's voice, mm-hmm. so it sounds like her telling her own story, and she she feels that 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 was accomplished, so that I'm very, very pleased with that. Yeah. So but, uh, once once that, of course, went a lot more quickly because it was sort of a matter of picking out the salient parts from the, the major story, rewording the, the telling a little bit mm-hmm. uh, to be for the age level, and, and then um, incorporating some of the extra elements that make the... Uh, children's version a little more educational. Right. The the way that uh, came about was that, as I mentioned, it was the second book in a series of books that Janet is um, writing and publishing, and so we we generally followed the the template of, mm-hmm. of the first book in the series. So they're they are black and white drawings in this book rather than actual photographs, mm-hmm. and that's just because that's the way that particular series 
is is looking. It works really well. I think it's very interesting, and the different fonts and things like that really make it an exciting book. Mm -hmm. Do you want to read a little bit from one of these for us? How about, um, I have have a couple of passages marked here in the the children's book. Oh, good. Um, And this is is going to, uh, let me just set it up a little bit, Mm -hmm. Um, in, in very recent years to continue her, at that point, about 40-year quest to get into space. Mm. And there, there's an expression that, that I'm going to be throwing in as I read this, and I want to explain it to, um, first, and that is her expression, throw it a fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is something that she picked up from the Taos Pueblo Indians when she was growing up in Taos. She had a lot of Indian friends, and they used that expression um, whenever something came up block to something they wanted to accomplish, but it was completely out of their control, and so they would just say, well, throw it a fish, <laughs> and that, and it didn't mean necessarily giving up on what they were trying to accomplish, but having to maybe regroup and find a different way to go about it. Right. So, so this um, excerpt says, back in the early 2000s, Interorbital System was working on a different idea for a spaceship. In 2002, they asked me to be their pilot. That sounded really exciting. Of course, I said yes. I went to California to see them test a small model of their rocket. It roared and fiery exhaust shot out. I wouldn't just be a passenger. I would actually fly the spaceship. Two years went by, and they stopped working on their rocket. I never got to fly their spaceship. I was disappointed again, but all I could do was throw it a fish. In 2004, I went to California to watch another developer test a spaceship. This company had already built one. A funny-looking airplane with two bodies hooked together by a shared wing carried the spaceship high into the sky. Then the spaceship unhooked them from the airplane, and its pilot started its rocket engine. It shot up to 62 miles above the Earth. It crossed into the edge of space. This company, Scaled Composites, actually built a private spacecraft that worked. And then, um, but then that, that didn't materialize either. And then she goes on to say, Boy, oh boy, did I get the surprise of my life in July 2021. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos invited me to be his honored guest aboard his space company's New Shepard rocket and go to space. When he told me that, my chin hit the floor and I just grabbed him and hugged him tight. I really didn't think I'd ever get to go up, especially at the age of 82. Our date for flight was going to be July 20th. How about them apples? On the 52nd anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, I would get my chance to go to space. I love it. That was that was in finally fulfilling her dream. Absolutely. She was 82 at that time also, huh? Well, good for Bezos for that. So, yes, indeed. He yes. Was, he was very, very nice and just um, treated her as the special person she is. And she is. I see that you have listed many of her accolades in the book and you also have pay a lot of particular attention and tribute to the mercury 13 is that it yes so tell us about them well these were the 13 women who passed those astronaut physical exams in 1961 they were all civilian airplane pilots uh, very highly highly accomplished pilots and um, they like the the actual NASA astronauts, they were scheduled to go for some additional testing of their skills and um, and their personalities, and um, but that those tests ended up getting canceled, and so the other thirteen women went on um, to have wonderful careers in aviation, but they. They basically said, well, that idea of space flight is, is not going to work. And um, Wally was the one who just 
kept going. She just had her mind made up. She was going to go to space, and if it wasn't going to be with NASA, by golly, she'd find some other way. That's right. I love it. <laughs> and these these Mercury 13 were actually also members of the 99. What was that group called? Well, the 99 is a, a an a organization of women pilots, and it was founded, oh my goodness, I but it was probably back in the 1920s or 30s. Mm -hmm. And one of the founding members was Amelia Earhart. And they're, they're called the 99s because that's how many members they had when they first started the organization. Um, but it's, it's one of the um, women's pilots organizations that Wally has been a member of since she became a pilot back in the 1950s. And... Um, has has continued to be very active in that group. That's great. They they do a lot of um, support for each other uh, because aviation, uh, especially back in the fifties and sixties, was very much a man's mm -hmm. province, and um, still to a large extent right. is. But right. but they really help women pilots along, and they give scholarships to women pilots to improve their skills and. Um, it's, just, it's a really great organization. It sounds like it, and it sounds like it's a much needed one in today's times. And I yes. really appreciate that both Wally and you have done so much to bring attention to the capabilities of women. Right, and you know, it's something that I've noticed in, in all of the women pilots and astronauts that I've uh, either talked with or read about. And it, it's like it, they didn't want to be treated special, you know, mm -hmm. hire me because I'm a woman. But they, they wanted to do the same kind of jobs that the men wanted to do, and they just wanted a chance to do that. Right. They were, wanted to prove they were perfectly capable. Right. And she, Wally certainly did. Yes, amazing person. Yes. She just kept getting up and going on. So now that Wally... And her story are written. What's next on Loretta's agenda as far as writing? Well, the the first thing I really need to do is is write a the final chapter for the adult book <laughs> and, oh, and write right. a chapter about about her um, of accomplishing her goal. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, I'm just I'm doing public speaking again, just trying to get the word out as role models uh, as inspiration for young people in general, but women in particular, mm -hmm. and, and say, you know, STEM careers are for you, too, and STEM careers are important for everyone. And, you know, think about, think about studying these subjects and, and getting involved in these fields. And that's, that's really Wally's message, too. Mm -hmm. She does, has done a lot of this, especially interested in, in uh, communicating that message to young people. I think that's great because that's where it needs th to start with young yes. young women especially to say you can do this too. Look at her. She mm -hmm. did it. When you do these presentations do you talk about the other women, the other ones in the Mercury 13? 13? Um, to some extent I mean I do I do talk about the, the Mercury 13 as a group, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, what they what they endured and and how they um, proved their their physical capabilities, at least. Mm -hmm. And um, then after that, I primarily talk about Wally because I say, as I say, she's the only one who really continued to press for the spaceflight aspect. Mm -hmm. The others did. Um, uh, do very well in aviation as well, though. So right. they were they were all very remarkable women. I think um, we've talked about the main messages of the book about uh, her career in aviation, her quest for spaceflight. But I think people are also going to enjoy just learning about some of the other adventurous things that she did and world travels and yes. um, hobbies, everything from showing antique cars to yes. um, sharpshooting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, it, it's fun 
to follow along with the life she's led, and she's had a lot of fun living it. She has, and I really got caught up in her life and really learned about her as a person and really liked her. Mm-hmm. I, I would never keep up with her, but it sure would be nice to know her. <laughs> That's right. And even now at the age of 83, I have to hustle along to keep up with her I when bet. we're walking somewhere. <laughs> I bet. I can only imagine. So story of the final chapter is on your website, right? Yes. Yes. I thought that was the the quickest way to get it out and make it available, especially to people who've already bought uh, the book. And I, I think that's an easy way for them to kind of get, I won't necessarily say the last chapter, but the next chapter in okay. Wally's story. That's good. That's a good way to phrase it. And that's authorhall.com. Uh, well, that's, that's my website, yes. But uh, the website that we use for her her story and her books is wallyfly.com. And that's W-A-L-L-Y fly.com. Right. Correct. Great. Very good. Well, then that, that's a fun site. It's got all kinds of fun things on it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you, Loretta. And oh, my pleasure, too. Thank yeah. you very much for inviting me. You bet. And we'll talk again soon. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. And that was Loretta Hall talking to us from Albuquerque about her new book, Higher, Faster, Longer, My Life in Aviation and My Quest for Space Flight by Wally Funk, as told to Loretta Hall. And also the children's version of that book, Higher, Faster, Longer, Wally Funk, Aviator Extraordinaire. And you can find the continuation of Wally's story at wallyfly.com. This is Tracy Hales with Ride On Four Corners on KSJE 90.9 FM in Farmington, New Mexico and 103.3 FM in Durango, Colorado. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.